How to edit videos using Shotcut. Today I'll run you by all the most essential Shotcut features that you will need in daily video editing. Hello everyone, my name is Maggie and welcome to another Around the Year video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different as I'm going to give you an insight into my full Shotcut video editing workflow. First of all, I think it's essential that I give you a list of the most important shortcut shortcuts. So I'll put that on the screen. You have S to split the clip at playhead, X to remove clips, and backspace to lift your clips. Once you know these three shortcut short <laughs> Once you know these three sh keyboard shortcuts, everything else is pretty much plain sailing. I really love Shotcut because it's free and open source and it's a really good video editing software as well. They have an amazing auto backup system. Even if it does crash on you, everything you did will be saved in the video file. Let's get started. The first thing you'll see is a little field with all your, your recent projects, if you have any, and a little bar to type in the name of your next project. And hit start. Then we'll need to open our files. So to do that, we'll go into the top left corner of our screen, click open file, and then simply choose the files we need from our desktop or drive. Once we've clicked open, you'll see them popping up in the playlist like so. Might take a moment depending on how many you've got. And now we can sim begin with our editing process. So I usually create four tracks for my projects, two audio and two video, so I'm just doing that now. And the reason for that is that I usually mute my videos and do a voiceover and an intro, so I will mute one of the video tracks and then I have an audio track for the voiceover and an audio track for the background music. So I'm just adding that into the title of the video tracks. This is optional, but I'm just doing that to make everything a bit clearer. Now you can obviously select just one video and drag it into your project, but I'm just going to select them all. And again, it might take a moment till they're all loaded. Although if you're dragging single clips into your project, it will appear immediately. So I will usually put all my videos in the muted video track, leaving a little space at the front so I can add my intro. I already have a voiceover prepared for this, so I'll just go into my files and open that up. And now I'll simply drag this into the voiceover bar into the voiceover track that I've created. Now it's time to start editing, to take out the bloopers and of course to align oh. the voiceover with the corresponding clips, since I usually have more footage than voiceover. If you need to remove a section of the clip, Simply hit split in the two spaces at the beginning and the end of that section you want to remove and then hit X on your to remove the clip and shift the rest of the clip to the left and seamlessly align with the bit before. Also it's worth mentioning that the cut tool only works in the selected track so for instance if my audio track is active Obviously, I'll be cutting things in the audio track, whereas if I click on something in the video track, the video track will become active and my edits will be made in the video track. If you need to add some time lapse to some clips like I have to do here, you go to properties and then to speed. And then you just enter the value you need and wait a second and there we go, the clip is sped up. I'll do the same thing for this one right here, hit enter and I'm just going to move that right here. And now we've got the empty black space here to get rid of. So what I'm doing next is I'm actually going to activate ripple edits across all tracks. 
So I'll just click this button here and then I'll hit X on my keyboard to make this disappear, this gap disappear, at the same time moving all tracks. So you want to make sure you the right track is selected. I've got the video track selected and now I'm going to hit X right here. And as you can see, both the both tracks shifted to the left. I have to do, undo that though because this tiny bit here disappeared. Now I'll reselect the um, track up here and hit X again. There you go. So now both tracks have shifted and I'll just deactivate this so I can continue editing out the bloopers without my tracks getting messed up. So this time when this is deactivated only the tracks selected will shift when you edit or remove bits and pieces here and there. So I'll just split here by hitting S on my keyboard and this will just split whichever clip is selected at the playhead. And note, it will only split the clip in the selected track. There you could hear me turning the page for my voiceover. I'll just hit S on my keyboard again and here as well. And now you can either hit X to make the um, right part of the clip shuffle to the left and attach itself to the other clip bit. But this time I'm just going to hit the delete button or the backspace. And as you can see, the gap stays where it is and this bit doesn't move over there. So I'll just move this somewhere else because I think this should go about here. So I've just changed the color to white and then you can position your text the way you need it, like so. And now it's time to get some music in there. So I'll open file and go to where I've got the music. There are several platforms where you can get music. The easiest, of course, is the YouTube audio library, though it is quite a job to find the type of music you're looking for there. Another cool platform that I've seen many people use is Epidemic Sound. Um, it does cost something, so it might not be for everyone, but there's a free trial um, of, I think, 14 days at least. But they got a really, really huge audio library to choose from. So that might be something for you if your channel is a bit more established or if you just need a bigger range of clips to choose from. So here I've got the music um, piece that I've downloaded and I'll just position my timeline the way I need to. Let's just make this a tad smaller. 
and now I'll just drag this into the music um, section I've made. And of course the um, sound needs to be turned on right here. Now what I'll do is, if you play this, it's far too loud to hear my voice over, so we need to get down the volume a bit. So I'll go to filters and plus, and I select gain and volume. You can find this under the audio section or you can just search up there. And I'll just turn this down. I've actually already made a preset here, so I'll just use voice over music. And it's really simple uh, to make a preset. All you do is you enter the value. This goes for any kind of filter on Shotcut. So you just enter the value and then you click plus. And then you can enter the name of the preset and save it. Or if you want to delete the preset you've got, you can click the minus button. Anyway, I'll go back to voice over music, which is minus 32 decibel. And now if I hit play, You can hear my voice over quite clearly, which is much better. Now I'll just copy and paste this track right there, because I just want to use the same track all over again in my video. And if necessary, I'll just hit S to split and X, oops, and select this with an X, just to get the muted ends of the song out of my project and now we've got the clip all over my the background music all over my video and the next step is going to be adding my logo my end screen my outro and of course the intro as well and i'll do all of that in the first video track that i've added up here so as you can see, I've muted the second video track. There's the sewing machine noise and everything, which is not very nice. So I'll mute the entire track again. And that makes the entire video just a bit more pleasant to watch. So any um, intro and outro I will put in the not muted um, video track up here. And then that way I don't have to mute every clip individually in the main bit of my video. Since I haven't filmed the intro yet, I can't really show you everything I do with that. It's nothing fancy. I basically do the same things I've done with the main timeline and audio. But one thing that you should know before you start using a multi-track project is that whatever track is above the other, will kind of overwrite what is below. So when I hit play here, you can see that my logo is on top of the clip below. So what you want to do here is you just find the beginning of that other clip somewhere here and hit S to split at playhead and X to remove. And now there you go. So that's just something to keep in mind and also when I'm editing the intro and outro section, so when I'm editing this bit here, I would usually turn on ripple across all tracks so I don't mess up my video and voice over clips which I've already aligned. If you need to add something anywhere in your timeline, you can just double click something till you see the red rim and then hit the clipboard and it will just jump right in there. So this is how you insert clips in between clips that are already there and that will simply push everything to the right. The clip. Another neat trick when inserting your clips is actually to double click and that will give you the playback on um, the little screen here and actually while it plays back you can hit the letter I on your keyboard and that will set the in frame of that clip and trim away everything before that and then you can hit play the, or the um, spacebar on your computer and then you can hit the O letter and that will just trim away the end and set the out frame and now you can just take that entire thing 
and drag it right there where you want it like so and lastly all you need to do is to export your video so you go to the export tab right here and then you scroll down and select what you want to export your video as there is a YouTube preset right here that comes ready-made in shortcut so I'll just select that and export my file and then you'll see the job here and you'll also see in a second how long it will take and once it exports you'll have your finished mp4 file and this is how I edit my videos I hope you found this useful if you did please don't forget to like this video and I will see you in my next one